Holding on to a giant kite while being pulled by a boat may seem like a fun idea until you try to land. After the Second World War, a lot of new things were invented, including water sports. Some inventions were arguably ahead of their time. But let's take a look at some of the most bizarre water sports from the second half of the 20th century. Make sure to watch to the end as the last water sport, if you can even call it that, is the craziest. Once water skis maxed out their potential on the water, they turned to new frontiers, including underwater skiing. Yes. Not surprisingly, the next choice for water skiers was to go up in the air in what was called sky skiing. The earlier versions of flat kites were pretty basic. The general idea was whoever stays up in the air the longest wins. This water sport was called many different names, including kite skiing and sky skiing. The sport is credited to begin in Sacramento, California during a state fair in 1951. Years later, Cypress Gardens in Florida became the spot for kite skiing as it was the place that the sport progressed to a whole new level. The kite size depended on the weight of the skier and the kite itself was made from aluminum tubes and nylon. Being pulled by a boat, all it took was a gust of crosswind to lose control. With that said, there's footage of riders flying their kites and hanging there without a boat, just on a windy day. But besides hanging 15 feet off the ground, there was really not much else to do. In the mid-1960s, a harness was invented, which was called a body sling, so that the athletes were not just hanging on by their arms. This opened up the opportunity for tricks. Back rolls were now possible, although these were referred to as 360s. Safety was also considered with the addition of not one, but two emergency flight releases, one on the boat and one on the flyer side. Floaters were also added. The speed of the boat is set by the flyer, which is usually around 30 to 35 miles per hour. Multiple competitions were held, based on either who holds on the longest without a harness, or time-based races with the use of a harness. Trick kite competitions were based on the number of tricks that could be performed in 60 seconds. 360 and reverse 360s were a thing, as well as backward flying and a dead man while controlling the kite with feet. Some even opted to land the kite backwards to score more points. The most difficult tricks were executed upside down, as it's hard to have a sense of direction. In good wind conditions, it was not uncommon to reach altitudes of 30 meters. The flat kite's altitude was controlled by the speed of the boat. In the 1960s, kite skiing was booming. There was even the Flat Kite Nationals held in Austin, Texas. Network television was hungry for kite skiing content as ratings were through the roof. But by the late 60s, ratings had dropped and TV networks abandoned the sport, and over time, the events came to an end as well. By the 1970s, hazardous flat kites were abandoned for the safer Delta kite designed by Bill Bennett. Bill Bennett invented the Delta kite, which was first used as a tow kite, but later as gliders, which was the precursor to hang gliding. At one point, Bill Bennett flew 1,200 feet above a lake. The kite was about 40 pounds and could be controlled unlike earlier flat kites. With this new kite, the pilot could perform turns. For those who found this to be too dangerous, there was another new, friendlier water sport, water shoeing. The beautiful thing about water shoeing is that it could be combined with other activities, like fishing. Then there were these. I'm not even sure what you would call it, but it looks like a plane being propelled by wind that actually lifts off the ground. Next up, we have the precursors to cable parks, which was basically a whirly gig-like structure with four water skiers circling around, and some earlier attempts at wakeboarding, which were done behind a car. <laughs> water tubing was also becoming a thing around the mid-50s. Sorry, I meant water tubbing. Handle passes were becoming a popular trick, and so was barefoot skiing. But without a doubt, water skiing was the thing to do. This is a gyro boat, whose inventors hoped to make it an officially recognized water sport. The gyro boat is a type of rotor kite, also known as a gyro kite. 
Unlike helicopters, rotor kites have no engine and rely on airflow to keep the craft in the sky. The airflow could be achieved by towing behind a car or a boat, dropping the rotor kite from an airplane, or using ambient wind for kiting. I don't know about you, but I'm not sure which one is more dangerous, piloting the flying boat or water skiing below it. Some of the earlier versions of gyro kites were used by Germans during World War II. Launched from the U-boats, the Foca Gellis FA-330 were towed from the back of the submarine using a 150-meter cable. The airflow on the rotors as the U-boat motored along the surface would spin them up and generate lift. The rotor kite would then soar approximately 120 meters above the surface and provide the pilot a view of up to 46 kilometers, compared to just 9 kilometers from the conning tower of the U-boat. It took about 5 minutes to set up the gyro boat. The tow boat needed to have at least 25 horsepower engine to maintain a speed of 20 miles per hour in order for the gyro boat to be able to lift from the water. It took about one hour to learn how to operate the gyro boat, and multiple schools started popping up. Once in the air, you could let go of the towing line and still fly by momentum and land. But it was illegal to do so because the moment you let go of the tow line, the gyro boat became an aircraft for which you would need to have a pilot's license to fly. Let us know in the comments below which one of these bizarre water sports you'd be most excited to try. Personally, I'd be up for some sky skiing with a body harness. Thank you so much for watching.